Welcome, fight fans, to another edition of Big Fight Preview. And what a fight the gentleman will be breaking down for you here on Pro Box TV, your boxing channel. I am George Dimitelis. Alongside George Jakovic, we have Teddy Atlas, Paulie Malinaji, and Chris Algeri. And Big Fight Preview is going to be fantastic because we're talking about this Saturday's fight, top rank in, co in cooperation with ESPN, the Unified Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. Arthur Beterbiev taking on Count Smith. Count Smith looking to throw a wrench in the possible future fight between Beterbiev and Bivol. This should be a good one. All right, George, let's break it down for the people out there. Thank you, George. Always good to be with these Hall of Famers and champions. And we're talking about a big return. Archer Beterbiev is back after almost a year out of the ring. His last fight was against Anthony Yard. He had some struggles in it. He's 38 years old. We're going to get to some keys to victory. We're going to get to some predictions a little later. But Chris, want to start with you. Um, tell me about your excitement for this fight. Callum Smith, his only loss is to Canelo at 168. He's at 175 now. And like I said, this is a long-awaited retu return of one of boxing's best in Better Biev. Well, my excitement for this fight is mixed because I've never been simultaneously excited and pissed off about a fight being made because I really want the Better Biev Bibble fight. And Callum Smith is a, is a real challenge. And it's, it's, it's not a foregone conclusion that Better Biev is going to get past him so we can see the Bibble fight. Um, so, yeah, I, I, when I first heard about it, I was upset because I really want the Bibble fight. But as we're getting closer, Cal Smith is good, man. It's a good fight. And he's a very dangerous, very dangerous fighter because he's got a great punch, got a good left hook, he's got a good right hand. He's six foot three, good reach, good boxing skill, a lot of experience. He's, he comes from a family of fighters, uh, a family of champions, too. So uh yeah, no, this is uh this is this is a good fight. It's and and if you look at these guys on paper, it's a shootout. I mean, you got guys that both of them are killer punchers, both of them are seek and destroy type guys. Um you know, Calm Smith, since he's moved up from super middleweight to light heavyweight, he's been very destructive. And, I mean, he's always been a knockout puncher, but he is putting guys away in violent fashion. I mean, he, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, the Dominican fighter they knocked out with a right hand. The guy's switching on the ground afterwards. And that, 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 Len, that, Len that guy can fight. Yeah, Lenin Castillo. That? Lenin yeah, Castillo. Castillo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had that, I mean, that guy, that guy's very tough. He gave Marcus Brown hell when they fought. And, um, and Smith was able to ice him with a, with a right hand early on, too. So uh, the the kind of punch that that Calvin Smith brings to the table, you know, you you got to respect that. Listen, we've also seen better be better be have hit the canvas before, especially early on in fights and against guys that were nowhere near the skill level of Calvin Smith or the punching power of Smith. With Smith, man, it, it's not oh you get hurt, you get put away, you wake up in the in in the dressing room with a guy like Smith. So you really can't make mistakes with him. So that that putting that on the line, I'm out right now. I'm excited again. All right, I was pissed off early on. But now I'm excited about this fight. I'm looking forward to, to Saturday night. Well, that's good. I'm glad you're not pissed off anymore. You know, it's funny. Yesterday, we did a show with Tim Bradley, and there were so many good points made that Paulie had a headache. So <laughs> hopefully his headache is gone. You're not pissed anymore. Teddy, um, talk a little bit about this fight. Like I said, most people are excited about the return of, of Better Be, but he is 38 years old. He is an inactive fighter, and he did struggle in his last fight with Anthony Yard. But tell me your take on this fight, your excitement level. Well, I'm pissed off too because I held <laughs> oh, there we go. up. I held up all my friends here, Paulie and Chris and you, because I'm technology uh, deprived and I'm um, computer illiterate. Uh, I'm dumb in certain areas, and uh, I didn't get on here on time, even though I thought I was doing the right thing. So that's number one. So I'll do. I'll take the. Uh, I'll take the path of Chris, and I'll put the pissed off away. And I just think about the fight. It's a it's a good fight. It's a good fight. First of all, better be of you know the everything Chris said is right. But the only thing is we're all talking about Smith and his danger. Don't forget about better be of the guy is nineteen and all with nineteen knockouts. When he hits guys, they they wake up somewhere else too. You know, uh, if, if they they wake up in the locker room or you know somewhere Hospital. removed. Yeah, yeah, he, he's a destructive force, too. So right there, you couldn't get a better promotion for this fight uh, from what Chris said. And just a reminder, a little tiny reminder for me that Mr. Better Beef is, uh, is Mr. Doomsday himself when it comes to TNT in his hands and his attitude. I mean, he comes from a place in the world where part of the culture, uh, kind of like uh, Habib in, in UFC and MMA, where... Part of the culture is to be a warrior. 
you know, to have a code of conduct to be brought up to be a warrior, to behave like a warrior, to train like a warrior. And he has that kind of behavior, that kind of uh, code, if you will, to better be of that makes him even more intriguing uh, and more dangerous. You know, he's a very, very <laughs> serious guy. You don't see nothing. You know, reminds me of the movie, my man, Paulie. I can't help it with Paulie. You don't think about movies, but reminds me of of the movie with Denzel Washington. Um, what was it? Uh, what was the the series that that they just had where he's um, you know, equalizer. He, yeah, equalizer. Uh, reminds me when he went after the Russian guy when they brought the <laughs> Russian guy in to kill him, and he says to him, he meets him at the table. And he says to the Russian killer, but but Denzel was the real killer. He's better be of. And he says, he says to Denzel, what do you see when you look in my eyes? What do you see? And then he tells him, what do you see when you look in my eyes? Nothing. So, and there was a little bit more to it because Paulie would be the guy that would fill in the spots for you. But that's better be of. He's that guy, but he's Denzel. He's the he's that guy. He wins. He finds a way. There's only one route for him, and that's to get to you, to get to your soul, and to break you down to the body, the head, with pressure, relentlessness, with the cold, all of it. He's getting older. He's 38 years old. He had 300 amateur fights. He was in the Olympics. I believe he was in two Olympics. There, there's miles on the odometer. I know he does most of the giving out of the beatings in the pros, but he's taking punches in the pros too. He's getting all. That to me is the equalizer. That to me is the X factor. Uh, are we going to watch him get old? And to Chris's point, he's in with the right guy or the wrong guy to get old with because Colin Smith is everything Chris said. First of all, what I love about him, I love his size, his body. He's tall. He's long. He's physically strong. He punches. But most important, his attitude. He His attitude is he's he's a fighter. And Chris said it well. He comes from a family of champions, a family of fighters. He is a fighter. So he's going to fight you. I think he would be best inclined in this fight to use the reach that he has because I saw in some fights he knows how to control Reigns when he wants to, but his attitude is to go get you, to engage you, because he believes in his power, he believes in his confidence, he believes in his mantra that he's he's going to outfight you, because that's how fighters behave. They're going to go fight you. And he loves to get inside, he goes to the body, he rips the uppercut off the body a la Mike Tyson a little bit. Uh, that's a good weapon for him. He can fight inside. He can fight outside. He's got a great counter left hook that Chris alluded to. I think that it comes down to his team talking him into getting him to, I hate to use the word give in in this one, but control his fighter's attitude, instinct. It's always going to be there. It's always going to be there. But for this particular fight, until we're proven wrong. This guy is a guy you don't stand inside with too long. And and you don't push the envelope and test him to find out, oh, yeah, maybe I could outfight you on the inside. So far, 19 guys have tried that. 19 guys have been knocked out trying to do that. So I would say use, it's up to him and his team, but convince him that use your length. Your jab, control the outside. See if you can make better be of paid for real estate to get in because you know where he's coming. He's coming to get you. He'll come appropriately, you know, technically sound and everything, but you can find him. You can hit him. Again, Chris said it. He's been on the floor before, but he gets off the floor and he puts you on the floor and he puts you away somewhere. So fight on the outside. Use that length. Use that size. And then the fighter's instincts, the fighter's attitude, that's always going to be there. In spots where you got to fight inside, keep it as tight as possible, but do not get drunken with that. Do not get intoxicated. Do not, do not forget who you're in there with. As much as he's in there with you and you're a fighter and you have that attitude, I get it.
but don't forget who you're in there. He is that guy. Until the day comes, he's not that guy. You fight on the outside the best you can. Catch him. Call. When you have to fight with him, fire with fire, you do it. But do it smart. Be tucked up. Don't stay there. Don't overdo it. Don't get greedy. Again, don't get drunk. And even if you have success in there, get back to the outside, whatever you can. At the end of the day, it's a really interesting fight. It went from where a lot of people was off the radar screen. A lot of people weren't even thinking about it, thinking about that, you know, they're just thinking about better be of and Bevo, like Chris said, that had him depressed for a while, that we might not get there. But now they're thinking about it because Smith is a real guy. But the last thing, the one time he stepped up, he did step up with Canelo to that next one, and he lost the decision. So good and bad. He lost at that level. It, it's probably improved him. It's probably improved him that he knows he belongs at that level. Number one, mentally, and that's the most important part. Mentally to be right going into a fight, any fight, especially a fight like this. But it also showed that he's got a good chin, that he can stand with a puncher. You know, I'm not saying better be if uh, uh, Canelo's quite the puncher, better, but he's a good puncher, and he's an accurate puncher. So it showed you that he can stand in there with you. Again, his trainer, be the boss there. Earn your living. I know he's got good people around him, but convince him. Use your length. If we have to go, you know, to to that place where you've been before, where you have the attitude to go with no problem, you'll go there. But try to use your length. Probably. Yeah, you know, um, a lot of good points being made here. First and foremost, I'm going to say I'm not pissed off. I'm in a good mood today, so I'm not good. pissed off. Good. So, All right. Good. You got another haircut? You look great. You, you, you look <laughs> Thanks, great. Paulie, Paulie, before you start, can I ask you a question? Go ahead. Go for it. Are, are, are you recording a CD today, your new single? And when is that uh, dropping? Because you're no recording. Studio. I just I just use different studios. That's it. Got you. Okay. That's the way we do it. You know? Okay. Today, we're in the studio. <laughs> but nonetheless, um, some good points being uh, made by uh, the, the champ and the Hall of Famer, Chris and Teddy. Um, I think, uh, you know, there's a lot to unpack in this fight. Um, first and foremost, I look at it and I look at these two guys and I look at them. They're both punchers. I mean, Callum has come up to the light heavyweight division. And as, uh, as, they, as the points being made, they've, he, they've, he's clearly uh, established that he's a powerful fighter in this weight class uh, with the kind of knockouts he scored. These two guys have basically pumped shotguns. You know what I mean? They, they punch holes in you. You know what I mean? Uh, so I think... Either way, there's a risk for both for a knockout for both guys, you know. And you look at it, better be of a sort of slowed down, right? He's sort of he's a sort of guy. He slowed down a little bit. He's susceptible defensively, where he, we've seen him kind of get hurt or even go down at times. But he gets through you. He's got that, uh, like 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 Teddy was talking about in the equalizer that that no no you see nothing in his eyes. He's, he's emotionless. He's he's a, a a stalking killer. You know, I'm in, I'm interested in um the game plan here, Teddy. You were bringing out that um you know, establish the distance for, for Callum Smith and then try to get to him later for Bitter BF because Bitter BF may be getting older. The problem with Bitter BF that I've noticed, though, is anybody who tries to establish distance or tries to box him patiently, he seems to so, to make the walls close in. He's very good at cutting off the ring. He's very good at making you pressure. And he's very good. I noticed in the Alexander Vostick fight, he makes you work harder to do what you want to do than he does what he has to do. So if you get through the three quarters point of the fight where you may be boxing well, and Vostek was boxing well, um, you feel like you've exasperated three times as much energy as him, and he, you're tired because he, he mentally stresses you as well. The way he cuts off the ring and the way he presents himself, so he's he's outboxable, but he you're not really. It's hard to get his respect in that way boxing him like that. I also noticed the guys that went kamikaze style, like Callum Smith, even uh, Anthony Yard, they had their success as well. Callum actually had him down. But of course, going kamikaze style, you're, you what happens? You know, you're, you're committing suicide as well. So you, you, you do damage, but you, it's your own doing as well against the guy with the punching power of bitter BF. So I find that both log, both senses of logic have had some success against better BF, but ultimately no one's been able to have the success, which is winning at the end of the night. And so I start to wonder, you know, is the could it be that the boxing Teddy's mentioning? Be the way it could it be the way now because Bitter Beef is a little bit older than he was in the Vostick fight, right? I mean, wait, wait, how many years have passed? About four or five years. So, yeah, boxing Bitter Beef just long enough, you know, is he able going to be able to continue to stay in that mental pressure in front of you and, and positioning himself to stress you and, and tire you out 
and make that make that feel like make it feel like that sand is running out of the hourglass and he gets to you or uh, is he going to be able to still make you feel like you're working so much harder and get to you you know or is the way because Callum Smith has more power than some of these other guys who've gone kamikaze style like yard um could it be that you know you 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 go at better Biev and you attack him and you try to back up the the, the big puncher uh, with the, the big right hand that he knocked out Castillo with, or the big left hook that he's known for, right? I mean, he's had trouble. He's had trouble in his last two fights at 168 you know, with Ryder and Canelo. That could have been maybe been the weight. That could have been also the the body frame, as both guys have a similar body frame. This fight's really interesting, man. It, it, I, I I probably lean to better be. It's hard to pick against him, but it's really interesting because you're going to live and die by your game plan here, and it's really, really something to think about as far as, you know, you box him well, because if, if you box him well, does Bitter BF and Bitter BF is still coming staying in front of you? Are you gonna have enough if you're worn down to knock him out, to knock Bitter BF out if you once you gotta turn it up a little bit? Or do you go at him and risk getting knocked out right away? You know, it, it's it's some really good points made by by uh my two partners here. Um and 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 you got you, you gotta pick one, right? You gotta pick one of the game plans. You gotta pick one. So um it's uh it's gonna be interesting to see which which game plan gets chosen by Team Smith? Because better be we know what he's going to do. You know, he's technically sound. He's been an Olympian, so he's not just pressuring you like a mutt. He's actually pressuring you intelligently um, with that big punching power. And both guys got that dynamite, man. We got some, like I said, pump shotguns, man. They punch holes in you. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think this fight can be really, really exciting. I can think I can see a fight where both guys go down. I can see a fight with both guys hurting each other. Uh, really, really interested in this fight. Talking better be even Smith, but Chris, before we move on. January 17th, Pro Box Wednesday Night Fight Series is back. You guys must be excited about that. Oh, you know I'm excited about it. We, we brought it up yesterday. I'm like, oh, man, we got, we got fights next week. Yeah. And we had a month off. Um, I'm, 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 I'm chomping at the, beat, at the bit right now. I, I want to get back to, to, to Plant City and, and call these fights. I, I've missed the live action. You know, holidays are nice, but now it's time to get back to work. And Pro Box, we got lots of work for the rest of the year. I'm like yeah, a hero right here. I need my fix. Yeah. Pro Box there TV. You go. Wednesday night I'm shaking over I here. Need my fix. There you go. Download that app. You get all this great boxing content. Before we move on, and Teddy did a great job of breaking down Callum Smith's keys to victory. But Chris, I wanted to ask you: uh, these guys were supposed to fight last year, and Better Be have had the jaw infection. I think he had dental surgery. I don't know what it was, but there was some kind of a jaw infection. Uh, is this better for Smith now that that there was a delay because? Archer's getting older. You know, father time keeps moving. Is it better now for Smith that this fight was delayed rather than happening last year? I've got a, I've got an interesting idea about this, actually. This, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm going a little, a little out there. Um, so better be have, hasn't been that active, but he's been fighting much higher level competition than Callum Smith has. Callum Smith has been a little more active. You know, he came at the 175. He fought two guys that they're not. They weren't world world level elites. Not the way that that uh, Better Beef has been fighting guys. So maybe a little bit of time for a Better Beef, even though he's older, is not the worst thing for his body. I know he lives a a a uh, Spartan lifestyle. The guy is always in shape. He trains a lot. He had some time off. Took you know he's forced to go away from from the sport. Um, I, I believe he's a devout Muslim, so he he lives a clean lifestyle. Um, so honestly, uh, being away and being forced to stay out of the gym might not be the worst thing for him. And to counter that with with Smith, he's had more time with Buddy McGirt, and they've been working on some things. But I'll go to the point that you know Teddy, you were making earlier about him boxing from the outside. I haven't seen him do that in a while. He mm -hmm. did that really well when I first saw him against against um, uh, who was uh, the the African fighter Nadam uh, Nadam Endam uh, Endam Hassan Endam. Uh, that was the first time I saw him. He did everything well. He boxed from the outside. He fought perfect from the outside. Right hands, left hooks, counters, everything. Dropped in damn like six times. Um, but but was able to keep distance really, really well. Have not seen that in him since then. John Ryder, much smaller guy, was able to come right in the front door. Changing levels, jumping over, popping out, using his using his his, his sneaky in and out, which actually better be have does really well. By the way, he's a really good boxer. Does not get the, the credit for it because he punches so damn hard. But he's a very good boxer, and he's sneaky the way that he closes distance, even with taller guys. Um... I haven't, I, like I said, I haven't seen that. So the 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 time away and the, and the fact that this fight's happening a year later might actually be be, a be, be better for better Biev as opposed to Callum Smith, who I think is getting further and further away from the style where I saw. But I was like, this guy looks unbeatable. Um, he, you know, he allowed the shorter Canelo to get right in the front door. He allowed the shorter John Ryder to get right in the front door. If he allows better Biev to come in the front door 
and doesn't put the jab on him, doesn't put that right hand on him in the middle distance where he has that 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 advantage, he's gonna get chewed up like everybody else. Because better be have he's not a one punch guy. He's a break you down, beat you up, snap your nose, break your rib, beat you into submission type fighter. We saw that in the Marcus Brown fight. He was hitting him everywhere, up, down. And Marcus Brown's a very talented guy. Paulie, I'm sure, you know, years in New York seeing him, and he's fantastic, fantastic fighter. And Peter Biev was able to break him down. And, and Marcus Brown is also a tough guy, strong guy, durable guy. Better Biev was still able to beat that drum and get him out of there. So like I said, he's not a one-punch guy. If you allow him to get inside, once he's in front of you, he's a nightmare. He does not stop punching. He doesn't get tired. He's a machine. He lets both hands go high and low, picks his punches really, really well. He's a precision puncher, and everything's hard. So if, if Smith can't establish that middle distance, and, f- and punch on the way in and try and catch better be on the way in. It's going to be a long night or a short night, depending on how <laughs> depending on how you look at it. But um, there are some technical things I'll, t- I'll talk about it for better be of later because I, I believe I hope we have some more time. I don't want to give I don't give a, a, my take just yet, but it depends on your durability too. I feel like the guys that have been able to sustain a, a longer beating from better be of are are guys who have a little bit more durability. Because I, I tell you, I, I remember working a fight earlier in Bitter Beef's career. He, the ex uh, heavyweight champion from Spain, dude. He's put this guy to sleep standing up, bro. I mean, this guy was out, like, out on the road, one shot. Bitter Beef is heavy-handed. He'll, he'll, it depends on your durability, I think, too. And the thing is, Smith, you say, you say Smith is working with Buddy McGurn now, so he's gone away from Has been for the last couple fights, yeah. Yeah, so that and I had forgotten about that, really. I can't see Smith really being the kind of fighter that's going to keep it on the outside, but he's going to maximize his punching power with that. You know, McGirt really, I, I train with McGirt. You really lose a little bit of your footwork, but you 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 may gain a little bit more punching power. Um, Smith may is going to probably, I'm not going to say he's going to let Bitter be in the front door because if he's right there, but he's not going to be moving a lot either. So he's going to, it's going to be jabbed right hands. I could see this fight being a, turning into a shootout here because with McGirt's style, you, you're going to maximize your punching power, but you're not really going to move, man. So it's not going to be a big, big effort to stay on the outside for Smith it, where, where where um he's going to be using his legs. Uh, but well, he's Chan, If ha- you watch Smith lately, he allows guys right in. And he, yeah. he'll, put it, he'll, he'll put his back on the ropes because he's yeah. looking for that counter left hook. He'll yeah. sit there and he'll cover he was, up and he'll back straight yeah, in. And I, mean, I remember in the Canelo fight, he was doing that uh, yes. there too. But yeah, I don't know if that's... Uh... You better not bitter be about if you're gonna fight that way, dude. He yeah. goes, Smith. The reason he does that, and you guys are making all good points. The reason he does that is what I alluded to earlier, and better be of, of course, is the master of it. But it's his attitude. He he believes in his physicality. You yeah. know, he's a fighter. I mean, I know that sounds like a you know, a, a, we, Teddy. We know we're talking about fighters. We're not talking about ballet here. We understand it's fight, but there's a difference. He he's a fighter. And he, you know, he embraces that responsibility to behave like a fighter. And, you know, whenever he can, he's going to get you. If you give him a choice between boxing and getting you, he's going to get you. Because of that attitude, that belief, um, that bloodline, quite frankly, grown up with fighters, and the confidence in his physicality. I say it again. He he physically strong. And he believes that the best way to use that is is on the inside. But to Chris's point, that was going off of what I had said, that he has shown that he can use that great length, and he has great length. He can use that on the outside. And so it comes down to, really, what do we always say? Yeah, you got to be certain prerequisites to be in a top fighter, a champion. Yeah, you got to be tough, right? You got to be strong. You got to have skills. You got a strong mind. Uh, You got to yeah, you, you gotta have all those things. Those are prerequisites. But the thing that separates you, and you guys know that better than most, you gotta be smart too. You gotta be smart too. You gotta come to the point where you've matured to the point, you're disciplined, whatever word you want to use, where you're smart enough to poorly touch on it to pick the right fight plan, to to be able to pick the right one. And that's what this is gonna come down to. That he's going to have to show to separate himself. He he ain't just going to out-tough this guy. He's going to have to use this, the brain, the noodle, the most important, the strongest muscle in our body, the, the head. He's going to have to use that and show that he can use that. And he he'll still have the attitude of a fighter and everything else, but use that length on the outside. And again, 
There's going to be firestorms. <laughs> There's going to be moments. This isn't going to be without rain. There will be rain. Uh, or what did Denzel say in the movie? Well, remember, when you pray for rain, you got to deal with the mud. Remember that, Paulie? <laughs> <laughs> and then you got to deal with the mud. And that's what this will come down to. Yeah, you, when you pray for rain, you got to deal with the mud. Now he's he's going to box on the outside, I believe. He'll show that he's smart or he's going to have to. And there's going to be moments when he's going to have to do what he's got to do inside. Make it moments. Make it smart moments. Make it the right moments. Make it the moments that gives you the edge and the advantage. For me, and I'm talking purely as a trainer now, um, That that's the way I, I would drill that into his head. But I wouldn't take away his attitude and confidence of himself being able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the guy. I wouldn't take that away. As a matter of fact, I tell him, I believe you could do it, but I believe we're better doing this. You guys have been dropping gems with this keys to victory, and Chris, we've been, and especially with Callum Smith, and Chris, I want to get your take on on uh, better be of what he has to do to win. But also, you brought up the Marcus Brown fight, and for people who have forgotten, uh, better be have had that horrific cut on his forehead and just showed composure that you don't normally see in, in fighters. Didn't deter him from his game plan, and he went on and knocked out Brown. But um. Let, let's talk about Arthur and, and his key. What is his path to victory? Because, again, you guys are dropping gems with what Callum Smith has to do. Let's talk about what Better Beav has to do to win this fight. You know, uh, we were looking at – we had the tail of tape on uh, a few moments ago, and, and there's three things that really stand out in that tail of tape. Number one is the fact that Better Beav is 19 with 19 knockouts, and he's been fighting real guys. So he, he obviously has the diamond. It's because he knows how to get guys out of there. Uh, number two is that he's 30 years old. Then that one, we're not really going to have an answer to until fight night. But then that other that other important factor is that six foot three, old, right, 38, 38 years old, yep. Six foot three for Calum Smith. Mm. That is, even at light heavyweight, that's big. And, you know, you got, you got Better Be Up, who's five foot 11 and a half. So key's victory for him is to close that distance and get to where he's he's in his, in his workshop, which is right in front of you, um, without getting hit by the big, big punching, longer armed Calum Smith. He's got to be smart on his way in. He's got to be deceptive the way he closes distance. He's got to move that big body of, of Cal Smith, who a lot of times on the outside is not as reactive as you'd like to see. He's allowed smaller guys to get in and hit him without really reacting. When he's on his P's and Q's and he's countering, he's a very dangerous guy. But he falls off a little bit. He gets elapsed. And just like you were saying, Teddy, that mindset that he has, uh, this brings me back to a conversation I had with uh, Daniel Jacobs once. And we were talking about you, Paulie. He goes, man. Paulie was such a good boxer. Could you imagine if he could punch like he had a one-punch knockout? And I said to him, I go, well, I bet you Paulie wouldn't fight the same way. Yeah. And he goes, hmm. And just like your point, Teddy, yeah, he can box on the outside, but man, can he punch. And he likes to punch, and he likes to fight. He chooses to fight because he can. And I don't think that's going to aid him in this fight. I think fighting on the outside is the way to be. He's got to do damage on the way in. So for better be, he's got to do the opposite. He's got to make sure no damage gets done on the way in. He's got to be able to get through that hailstorm of that middle distance to get to where he likes to be, which is on the inside with a guy with his back against the ropes. Because there, I don't think anybody beats him. He lets those hands go and picks his punches really, really well. And even when you block shots with a guy like better be, it doesn't matter. He's doing damage. You're catching flack through the glove. Your wrist bone is hitting you in your cheekbone. You're getting swelled up because he's beating you up so much. And he hits that hard. He's got that penetrating power. He's a good knuckle puncher. I don't know if any of you guys have seen Better Be of's hands in person. Yeah. It looks like a gnarled root. Both yeah, of his hands look like gnarled roots. I had him in a fighter meeting one day. I'm looking at this guy, and I'm like, that guy's did cut you, out of different stuff. Did you see it was the, the Vostic way, fight. Did you see his push-up regimen that he does? What he's yep. switching, Flipping he's on his wrists and his hands. And uh, it's a, yes. He beats it's a crazy body. workout he style. And, just, and, and, and basically just turns him into rocks. Yeah, his hands look like gnarled roots. I'm telling you, looks like it's a, it looks like a root system of a tree, and he's stoic like a tree. Just like you guys said, that mindset, those cold eyes. You mentioned that that Marcus Brown fight with that cut. He is a cold blooded assassin. That man. He's and the boogeyman. He he's the he's boogeyman the until the he is. He's the boogeyman um, until he's not the boogeyman anymore. But right now he's he's what what what's the guy's name from John Wick? Holy. Uh, the, John uh, the boogeyman. Daddy, the I didn't John. see John Wick. Yeah, you, you didn't see John, John Wick? Wick? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Daddy, I'm sorry. I disappointed him. <laughs> oh, man. That's I'm the not... first time I saw Teddy disappointed on these oh, shows. I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm big on all the movies. Chris, but, man, I can't, I can't believe you didn't see John Wick. All right. We John got Wick's time. a good one. 
We got time. There's four of them. But well, we well Polly, uh, better be him. <laughs> what about what about one. better be him's keys, Polly? How, how's he going to win this fight? Bobby Yaga. That's the name. Bobby Yaga. That's what they call it. Chris, they call it. Thank hey, Chris, you. Chris is the backup. Bobby Yaga. What a team. We got a good team here. See, everybody's everybody, the same guy, unless the other guy steps in. Bobby <laughs> Yaga, whatever. Bobby yeah. Yaga. Yeah. Well, better be able to uh, keys to victory. I mean, he, he's got to be able to close range. And he's got to be. And, and you know, I think Callum Smith is going to give him that opportunity, as Chris said. You know, uh, Callum isn't really a guy who, who stays on the outside. Um, like I said, I've worked with Buddy McGirt. He's more of a guy who's going to make you move your head and shoot from where you're at. Um, then he more so than he will be, um, uh, give you the ability to move basically in the way he sets you in your stance and whatnot. And that it can work for Callum. He's a big puncher. Um, he's got to be careful, uh, running into the, uh, right hand on the way in, uh, Callum has long jab, long right hand. I, I believe Callum himself is going to have to be busy on that jab in order to keep better be from walking in that front door. But I think better be, you know, he's hittable on the way in, so he's got to be careful, but at the same time. I don't know that uh, Callum is going to be able to catch and shoot the way he wants to uh, all the time. Because like, like Chris said, I mean, you know, better be his power. It's not the kind of power you want to take even when you're blocking, you know. So um, I believe better be if has to work is when you can jab with a jab or use that jab to get inside. And then uh, uh, I'd say go to the body a lot. I think he stopped, he stopped Brown with a body shot. Yep. Um, he, he does hurt you to the body. Uh, and then it'll break you to the head. If you can get Smith in a position where he's mentally panicking to where he has to feel like he has to fight you off, where it's a, where a lot of guys get to that point with better be, even if they intend to box, eventually he makes them feel like they got to fight him off. Like they can't sit there boxing. He's too much stress, too much pressure. He's cutting me off. I'm, he's in front of me. I'm losing my mind. Like I got I to get this guy off me. I got to do it, you know? And he makes you end up, he makes you fall into that trap. And you gotta, you feel like you want to fight him off, you know. It, it better be if can work his way inside and get Smith to that point. Now you're fighting fire with fire at Bitter BF's range, you know, which is obviously yeah, Callum Smith has some sneaky uppercuts and whatnot. But this is Bitter BF's range. This is Bitter BF. Bitter BF hurts you at every. This is where Bitter BF hurts you with every single thing he throws. When he gets to that range, when he gets to that point right there, he's hurting you with every single thing he throws. And if he gets you to that point, you're already in a mental panic. So now he's hurting you with everything he throws. You, you, you start to come undone a little bit. And, of course, you can start to come undone because it separates you from your consciousness as well as he hits that hard, uh, if that's the case as well. So I, I think that's the building block for, for better BF. You got to work your way in. You got to work it behind the jab. He's technically sound. He's got his hands up. He can't, he's he got to be careful with the right hand, I think, of, of Smith more so than anything else because he kind of he's kind of a little bit straight up walking in. He doesn't have a lot of head movement on his way in. So he's kind of a high guard kind of guy. He's going to have to be careful with that. Uh, but other than that, I think uh, working his way in behind his own jab, uh, uh, cutting off the ring, uh, not that Smith is going to move, but Smith may step here and there, cut him off everywhere he goes, make him feel like you like he tends to do, where you feel like anywhere you go, you feel like you can't get this guy off you. Eventually, you get Smith to feel like he's got to fight you off, and that's it. Once you got him there, I think it, it's, a, it's a matter of time before you go. All right, well, that, that leads right into predictions, and, and better be if it's a minus 450 favorite to win the fight. Uh, Teddy, I want to start with you. Predictions for this fight Saturday night. I'm not going against a guy that, you know, uh, you know, it, it ain't broke. I ain't fixing it. All right. I mean, sometimes it's simple. Sometimes it's complicated, but it's fighting. And sometimes fighting comes to those simple principles. The guy's 19 and 0 with 19 knockouts. We've seen that before. But as both of the champions said, he's done it with quality guys. It's not just a built-up wreck, you know? We, we You can go and get anybody 19-0 with 19 knockouts if you have the money to go out west and travel around and, you know, get those guys, uh, you know, out of the kitchen that are working short order. You, you get them in there and, you know, you, you get a win and you go on to the next town. But that's not the case here. The case here is this guy is the real deal. Uh, he's He's knocked out real fighters. And until he shows me that he's too old, and I think that will ultimately be one of his, uh, one of the things that will defeat and does defeat everybody if you stay around long enough or too long. is Father Time, he, you know, that old cliche, he's undefeated. Until Father Time uh, gets another notch on his belt, I ain't going away from Better Beer. I'm not. Uh, I think that I don't know what the under over is, but I think it'll go rounds. 
because of I think nine under, rounds is the under over. Yeah, well, I go. You know, a lot of people will probably take the under, but we better be involved. Uh, and I don't know where they're trying to get you to go with the lines. I would guess they're trying to probably get you maybe to uh, to go with the over because uh, they think it's going to be under. I would think you probably have to lay money on the under. Um, maybe you get a little something back on the over. But because of the qualities of Smith, you know, where he's been in there with the Canelo, he knows that he belongs. Uh, you know, he has the options of fighting inside, outside. For me, he's got to fight on the outside to, to give himself the optimal chance to win. But he's got the attitude of a fighter. You know, he's he's got everything that a fighter needs to have. He knows how to fight. Um, I'm going to say it's going to go rounds, enough rounds. Uh, maybe he breaks the streak of better BF, where, you know, he becomes 20 and 0 with uh, only 19, only, only 19 Smith knockouts. Smith has never been down. Uh, yeah. Never been stopped, never been down. Uh, yeah, but he's never been in with better be of either. But yes, mm. I I I got you. Um, at the end of the day, I'm I'm going with better be of. Maybe, like I said, maybe the knockout streak ends. Maybe, um, but I'm not going against the guy. I'm not going by against Bayoba. Bayoba, what's his name, Chris? Baba Baba Yaba. Baba Yaba. I'm not <laughs> going against Baba Yaba. That's Bobby Abba. He once killed three men with a pencil. Do you understand? <laughs> Do, Paulie's going to watch it. I know Paulie's going to watch this now. I Boy, know. the first one's good. Oh, okay. man. It is. But they're all pretty good. But a lot of, you know, it's a little crazy. A lot of boom, 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 boom. <laughs> all right. All right. So, okay. so, so Teddy's going with Archer now. We did a sparring session last week, guys. Start with you, Paulie. You both. I asked you this question. Who would win the fight? This is last week. You both picked Callum Smith. So we're a few days before the fight. Paulie, start with you. Who's winning this fight and why? You know, first off, you know, the last time better be a fought a Smith that had never been down. He knocked him out in two rounds. You know, that sure was just, you know. Um, also a tall, long puncher. Yeah. So, mm. Kind of look alike. <laughs> and, and, and this Callum Smith also has the... Um, this Smith Callum also has the uh, habit of letting guys in and, uh, you know, taking, letting them, you know, shoot shots at him himself, you know. Uh, Better Beef is not the kind of guy you can trade with, even if you're a big puncher yourself. Not the kind of guy you can trade with because he's got a durable chin. He'll take yours and you'll still go. You know what I mean? And when we found that out with Joe Smith, and Joe Smith found that out himself. You know, I don't know. I may have picked Callum just for the sake of sparring session, you know, but for the argument, I, I, I the closer we get him, I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be better BF. You know, keep in mind everything we're talking about, all the breakdowns, all the technical stuff. You know, sometimes these fights, these kind of fights here, they end in first round knockouts because somebody gets ripped. You know what I mean? Keep in mind, there's always that outside chance with two punches like this. And then all the good technical stuff we've been talking about, it ends up being a waste. You know, all right. the great technical possibilities. I've watched fights. I can remember thinking of Danny Jacobs. I can remember Danny Jacobs and Peter Quillen and being like, yeah, this fight was on its way to ending. And I was like, damn, this was going to be a good fight. But now it's going to be over in a few seconds. And I can remember Felix Trinidad and Fernando Vargas. When Fernando Vargas went down twice, I remember oh. thinking, Damn, this fight was going to be a good fight. Now it's going to be over one was. round, and and, and nobody's going to get that. Was a great fight, happen. but instead, Vargas may somehow survive round one and ended up being a great fight. So this is one of those fights. I believe this can be a great fight. The longer it goes, I believe this fight has the makings of a real classic here. But it could also end in one round, so just be careful. And that doesn't mean all our great technical work is a waste. Okay, it just means somebody gets caught and both these damn guys hit too hard. But nonetheless. I can see a real shootout here. I can really see a real shootout here. But better be if usually likes to win the shootouts. I don't know. He's more durable in these shootouts. He's a little older, so you got a wild card. Listen, but at plus 320, Callum Smith is a live dog. If you want to be one of those degenerates, you know, sometimes I saw all of us in to be every once in a while. You know, <laughs> Callum Smith is there certainly alive for a plus 320 guy. He can punch. He can. He's a, he's a big, light heavyweight. All that good stuff. Better be if he's older. You got all the makings of a great... Plus on the dog here, but he's a he's a plus three twenty for a reason. Arthur Betterbeev knows how to win shootouts. I think this fight could be a, a dragged out through the mud shootout. You want to what is it, uh, Teddy? You want you want the rain? You got to be willing to play in the mud, right? So you got to deal with the mud. You want the rain? You pray for rain. You got to deal with the mud. 
Well, this one, this one's going to the mud. This one's gonna be a shootout. I got better be a bleep. All right, Chris. All right, so I've I've been flip flopping on this one a lot, and mm -hmm. you know when it first was announced, I was like, ah, oh, better be have got him. He's just a different guy. I I I thinking about just better be if it's just just a monster. He's Baba Yaga, like we've been talking about. Then last week, and listen, even though I've been flip flopping, I have been adamant about whoever I was picking. I had better be have definitely very true. Last week I had Callum Smith definitely. I was telling you guys, I'm like, oh, he's knocking him out. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I see I see things, I see things. I'm 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 getting a, I'm getting a feeling. And a couple of days ago it was different. This morning's different. Right now it's different. So I'm, I'm, and tomorrow I'm not might be different. Uh, exactly. might be different. Yeah, we got a couple of days to the fight. And I'm not flip flopping because I'm a floozy over here. I'm flip flopping because it's that kind of fight and it's that kind of matchup. This is what boxing's all about, man. Like you said, Paulie, this could be an all time classic. This could be a 30 second blowout. And just because we got such dangerous guys in the ring, there are things that Better BF does that I know Callum Smith can take advantage of. And if Callum Smith lands, it's night night. I could see him icing uh, Better BF early. I could also see the fight going into a late distance being a great fight and Beto just breaking him down, beating him up. When I got a fight that's this close on paper, this close on video, on, on tape review, what I go with is I go with experience, what's already happened, and I go with your balls. And now with these two guys, I look at the past and I've never seen a lack of effort from Better BF. He has been cold stone killer all the way through. I can't get over that Canelo fight with Callum Smith. That performance sticks in my mind so hard. And I think that's going to be the difference in this fight. I think he allows he better be able to do things that he shouldn't do. He and it makes it. it a, yeah. So for me, I'm, I'm, I'm going back to better be Ev. but guess what? I'm throwing money on Callum Smith because <laughs> that line is good enough. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go full D-Gen, like Foley talks about. And I'm putting it's worth money the shot. on Callum Smith. You're, you're going to plus like, three twenty. Like we're also the line the is good enough. Saturday. The line is good enough, and the shot. chances are, are could happen. But from a, from a boxing technical technical standpoint, if if I'm telling you, I, I got better BF. All right. Well, my my prediction is that Tony Weeks is not going to rep this fight. Maybe it's too <laughs> soon for Tony Weeks' joke. But Paul, but t uh, Teddy, want to get your take really quick? We're about to wrap this up. I'm going to throw it to George. But yesterday we talked about Tony Weeks and the whole fiasco from the weekend. I was just curious if you had a, t a take on that fight. Of course, he stopped the Virgil Ortiz, uh, Frederick Lawson fight prematurely to say the least. And then there was a controversy afterward. Uh, what, are you, what are your quick takes from that whole debacle? I think there should be an investigation. Problem is boxing never investigates itself, never polices itself, ever. If it was the NFL, something similar to this happened, forget about it. Uh, close shop down until we figure this thing out. I mean, they would get to the root of it. They get to the bottom of it because they have to. The credibility of the sport, and nobody worries about the credibility of the sport anymore. Unfortunately, you don't have credibility. No, a hundred percent. Like like the late great Bert Sugar said, you know, boxing can't get any more black eyes. It's the Cyclops. You know, it, it, there's no more black eyes to blacken anymore. Um, I I want an investigation because of what supposedly was attached to Weeks's post. His, uh, I don't know. Listen, we know, you guys know the technology, you know the internet better than I do. Obviously, I'm a real caveman there. That's, that's why I was late again today. But Weeks, there was a post. And again, I don't know. It, it was first attributed to Weeks's social media uh, from there. But I don't know if it is because there's a lot of false stuff out there. You know how it is better than me. Yeah, we don't. We don't know. I don't know, and I'm. I mean, that's why I'm saying it and repeating myself because we don't know. But if it's anywhere, if there's any semblance of truth in the post that was put out there, attributed to week weeks that supposedly his explanation for stopping the fight, which there was no other real explanation. He shouldn't have stopped it that abruptly at that time. I We know what was going to happen. Uh, there's no doubt that Virgil Ortiz was going to stop. He was in there to get stopped. He'd been knocked out three times previously. He looked like a shot fighter, quite frankly. His legs didn't look right. All of that stuff. And he was picked by Golden Boy to get stopped. Uh, no doubt about it. But at that moment when it was stopped, he was blocking a lot of those shots. He sagged a little bit. There was a moment early he got 
he got staggered by a jab. His leg, his legs gave in from a jab. He he did not look like he had sturdy legs going into the fight. And that moment against the ropes with 20 seconds left, whatever it was, he looked like he sagged, but a lot of those really were being blocked. And he he abruptly stepped in, he being weeks, and he and he stopped the fight. And he's got a bad track record anyway. So that that was inexcusable, unless, and I had actually written this to myself to prepare myself uh, after the fight. As soon as I saw it, I said, the only reason you would react that way is either corruption, because you were told to do it. I'll put that aside for now. I have no proof of that. Or because you knew what everyone else knew. Well, we all knew that this guy didn't belong in the ring with Virgil Ortiz and that he could get hurt with Virgil Ortiz and he was going to get crushed by Virgil Ortiz. So the second you, and that's not a ref's job, but the second that you started seeing it going down that road, you were prepared to do what was in your head, to stop a mismatch. That, that I wrote that to myself, say that's the only explanation other than the really, really nefarious one where she's corrupt. And then this this tweet comes out, this post comes out, where, again, they attributed it to him. They took it down. I don't know if it's from him. I don't know, again, if it's if it's accurate at all. But if it is, you need to investigate this sport. Because basically what the tweet said, what the post said, was supposedly attributed, supposedly, to Weeks was, the reason I stopped it was before the fight, there was a brain scan done on Lawson. And at first they found, they found a, um, aneurysm. Uh, aneurysm. And they found an aneurysm. Thank you. They found an aneurysm and they were going to, obviously you got to answer the fight. The guy's got an aneurysm in his brain. And then another doctor came in and he read the report and he saw it differently and they allowed the fight to go on. So he was telling us that, that's why he jumped in because he had seen a report that had said that this guy was really medically sh shouldn't have been in the ring. That that there was a chance he shouldn't have been in the ring. That he could die if he got hit with a punch because of this medical issue. And he he put someone put that out there. Again, we don't know who, we don't know the accuracy. But all I say off for of that, if that was true, first of all, Weeks should not have done the fight. From a moral standpoint, he had an obligation morally as a ref, as a professional, as a human being to say, I'm not refing this fight. You guys are putting somebody in there that could be in more danger than you normally at. This is a dangerous sport, but could be in more danger than you normally at going in healthy to a fight. You're putting a guy possibly unhealthy into a fight. You know what? I I can't, I can't, in good conscience, I cannot go and referee this fight. And the other question I have is, how the hell did Tony Weeks get to see these reports? Because that is not normal. That is not normal action when it comes to the commission. They don't show the referee the medical report. Mm. So again, a lot of questions. Uh, I'd like to get answers. That That's my response to you, George. A lot of questions. It's a sport I love. I've been in 50 years. We all love it. I, I wanted answers. I, I wanted to stop being the red light district of sports. Stop that. There's no one who deserves to be looked out for more than fighters. Nobody. With everything that they risk and they put on the line. So I, I, want, I want answers. I, I want the sport treated like other sports with the same respect, the same care. I want the fighters treated with the same care and the same respect that other other sports as athletes get treated. I want the same thing. When somebody look at something like this in football or anywhere else, they'd say, we're going to find out. We're going to find out. <clears throat> we're going to get answers. I want answers. Well, this is an ongoing saga, and the, the Nevada <laughs> State Athletic Commission came out with a statement and and basically said that uh, that the fighters were cleared and, and everything was on the up and up. Didn't really answer any questions. It was kind of a blanket statement. That's a but problem. That's it, a problem. You're right. And, and this is an ongoing saga, and who know, hopefully we'll get some answers. But, uh, Teddy, thank you. I want to get your take on that. But all three of you, you gave me your takes on Viterbi Evan-Smith. You've got Arthur. I got to do one other thing. I got to give you credit. 
in the Virgil Ortiz fight, <laughs> we all made our predictions. We all had Virgil Ortiz last week winning by knockout. Uh, Paulie started with the fourth round. I went to the third round. Uh, Chris went to the second round. And then you were about to go off and said, no, no, no. You got to make a pick now. You got to pick the first round. You pick the first round. You're the winner. You get the you get the prize. I don't know what that prize is, but you know what it is? It's That prize is going to be the full collection of the John Wick series. That's what that prize is. <laughs> and I'll give that to Paulie. I'm yeah. gonna give that prize Please. to Paulie. Bro, we should that we'll, we'll donate that to ProBox so we can watch it when we're sitting around uh, Plant City. Yes. Well, that sounds like an I look. You guys all pick better be We know that Paulie's gonna watch the John Wick series, George. That's next on Paulie's list. In between getting prepared for January 17th, Paulie's watching the John Wick series. George, we're throwing this one back to you. We'll we have to find out if the John Wick series is better than the Matrix series since they both star Keanu Reeves. But that's that's for a different. Network. A lot anyway, more bullets anyway to the head. we'll see. A lot more bullets we'll see what happens head. with Callum Smith and Arthur Bertrand. And of course, we might have a big fight recap of that fight later on or next week here on Pro Box TV, your boxing channel. Don't forget to download the app and follow yeah. us on all our social media platforms. Like and subscribe. Pro Box TV, your boxing channel. Yeah.